Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new here. As you can see from today's title, today's video is going to be about all of my luxury baby items. I say luxury just because they're super hefty in price tags. Um, they're a bit obnoxious. I know, I'm gonna just say that right in the beginning so that nobody comes to me in the comments. They are very expensive. You know, your baby doesn't need all of these fancy gadgets, the newest technology. Your baby just needs love. It's a parent that loves them. The little things that really matter the most and your baby will be fine. Your baby will probably be the same as my baby. It's just that I'm extra. So yeah, now that we got that little disclaimer out the way, it wasn't until I started working on this video that I realized I spent a lot of money on baby items and I was gifted some very expensive things. So we're just gonna dive right into the video so that we're not here all day. I will have timestamps on screen so that you guys can kind of skip around if you're here for like one particular item. I'll have everything linked down below if you want to buy an item, stuff like that. So let's just get right into the video. All right, so I have my trusty little notepad because I don't have many things to show you in my hand, obviously, because some items are so big. Um, a lot of them are already done with because my son is nine months and some are in the car and stuff. So I will have pictures right here. I'll try to talk about it as detailed as I can. And let's just dive in. Okay, so the first thing that I have is the Stoke stroller. Stoke, Stokey, however you want to say it. Um... I feel a lot of different types of ways about this stroller. First and foremost, it's an absolutely beautiful stroller. It's absolutely stunning. It is one of my favorite strollers um, to use for aesthetics because it's just very nice on the eye. I love the gray. I love the gray uh, material paired with the brown leather. I feel like it's very airy, even though it's neutral. You guys know gray is also my favorite color. If you didn't, that's a little fun fact about me. So I was very adamant about having a gray stroller. And at the time, the only other gray stroller that was on the market was the Nuna one. Um, and I know Nuna is a great brand, but I just didn't want her. Um, I believe she just newly started coming into like stores in America. So if you could go to a store and test drive her, I definitely recommend that. But the ride on it is so, so, so smooth. There's literally not much I could say con wise about the appearance of it and the functionality of it but the biggest thing for me when it comes to that stroller that just like grinds my gears is disassembling it and folding it up to go in the car um if you are somebody that is going to just leave your stroller in your house or like your garage or something this obviously might not apply to you but for me because it was something i used when i was going to new york to dc all of that to the mall sometimes even it's just a hassle. It really, really is. Um, I drive a Jeep and it takes up a great amount of real estate in the trunk. So if you are someone that drives a car, I don't think it would be for you. But it's just a, such a beautiful stroller. It really, really is. The quality on it is so amazing. It's literally so soft, so plush. Like, you ever stare at your baby in a certain item and you just know your baby's comfortable? That's how that stroller is for me. Like, I just know that he's snug, he's comfy, it's soft, it's plush, that type of stuff. I just really wish it wasn't as hard as it is to disassemble and, like, to break down to put into the car because that's really, like, the only thing for me. Like, sometimes I just don't feel like being bothered with taking that stroller apart. But other than that, I absolutely love it. It's just so pretty. It really, really is. It is a really, really nice stroller. It's just a headache headache to fold up it takes a couple minutes you have to sit the you have to put the seat on the floor put the other part in the car it's just it's really it's a lot and all of the accessories that come with the stroller like the mosquito net the sunshade the cup holder all of that does not come with the stroller which is them it just is a really nice stroller if you're into the appearance of things but while we're on the topic of stoke i have the matching baby bag right here to show you guys so it looks like this. I got her in the matching gray to match my stroller and I really, really do appreciate this baby bag. I use this baby bag more for like a day-to-day -day basis when my son was young because um, now I just throw a diaper into my purse and I go. Um, but when he was little and I didn't want to carry my high-end designer baby bag, this was the one I opted for. It's beautiful quality. It's the same amazing quality as the stroller itself. But the reason this is so nice if you get the Stoke stroller is because it has two clasps right here and it just buckles right onto the stroller itself. So I have a picture right on screen so you guys can see kind of where the bag hangs so it's really really nice just because if you're someone that you need extra storage space because you only really get that small little sack at the front of the stroller um this is nice to have hanging and it's out your way it's out of sight out of mind it blends in because it's the same material and it matches so it looks like it's a part of the entire system um so super super nice it has like a arm crossbody strap that's adjustable 
And then there's straps inside. I haven't put mine on because I don't need to. But it also converts into a book bag. So like if your husband wants a baby bag, this is also a great option for them. So they have something to carry because not all men want to carry something super feminine. It also has like a removable pouch in the inside. So that way like if you need to just grab the pouch and not take off the whole baby bag, you could do that. Like if you were going to the restroom to change your baby, stuff like that. So it's really, really nice. I do really like this, um, this bag. I get a lot of use out of it, way more than I thought. And every time I'm going anywhere for like a little day trip to the city, New York or something, I always take this in addition to my regular baby bag just so I have a lot of space to shove things in. But let's go on to the next thing on the list, which is my Gucci baby bag. Let me grab her because she's so pretty. I can't wait to share her with you guys. So my designer baby bag is this Gucci one. Um, obviously having a Gucci baby bag is not a necessity to life. It's not gonna make your child grow up to have superpowers or something like that. Um, but she's absolutely beautiful. At the time when I was pregnant, Dior had one, Fendi had one, and just all of them had things about them that I wasn't crazy about it. Specifically, the Dior one was $3,300. Like, that's insane. That's somebody's rent. Out of nowhere, Gucci launched this one, and um, it disappeared off the website within a month or two, so much so to the point that I went into the Gucci store and the guy asked me when I bought this, when I had just got it like a month before that. I don't know why it disappeared, but I do have a link down below that is available at a, re a retailer overseas. So if you are interested in this baby bag, I highly recommend just picking it up before it just disappears completely. But anyways, it's just so, so cute to me because obviously it's Gucci. You can see the Gucci print all over it, so you can tell us about that designer handbag. But the bananas on it just make it seem very babyish, like childish. Like It just seems like it belongs to a kid, whereas some of them, they just look like an adult bag that carries baby stuff. So I really, really love this. It just makes me so happy every time I see this. It has like the orange strap right here. It comes with a changing pad. It's like very, very plush. It says Gucci. Oh my goodness, right? Um, and people say it's small. I don't think it's small. I think that if you're someone that packs what your child needs, that is actually more than enough room. So it has like a couple compartments in the inside. You can't really see because I just have a whole bunch of crap in here. But it has like compartments in here um, and it has like a bigger one right here. And then it has the two side pockets. I fit everything I need in here. I fit more than enough diapers, wipes, a sound machine, um, Lysol wipes, uh, air purifier, fans, all of that. It always fits in here so I don't have any problems with it. And again, I just think it's absolutely adorable. Like. How could you not love this baby bag? And you just don't see anybody with it, which is why I really like it as well. I've only seen about two people with it, and I came across those people on TikTok. I've never seen anybody with this bag in person. So it's like a little hidden gem. It's not a necessity. You don't need it. But if you were looking for a high-end designer bag, I definitely think that one is the way to go, or just the original Gucci one, um, because they're really nice quality. They're durable. That's something that I plan on saving and keeping for my kids, my grandkids. Yada, yada, yeah. So... Just wanted to get that out the way while we were talking about baby bags. Next thing I have is another stroller, and this is the Cybex. I have the Cybex e Um, Before we even dive into that, they recently discontinued the one I had. Well, not discontinued it as in something was wrong with it, but they basically came out with a newer version, um, and it's even better than the one I have. It's even better than the one I have so much to the point that I want to sell mine and buy that one, but... <laughs> I'm trying not to because I got some strollers to begin with. But anyway, so I have the Cybex e Prium, and the e Prium is the one that has a motor in the back wheels. Um, and basically, the motor in the back wheels helps you with going uphill or downhill. So if you're going uphill, it'll just help you pick up your step a little bit. If you're going downhill, it'll just kind of lessen the load. It'll not take control of the stroller for you, but just make it easier on your wrist and stuff like that. Super, super obnoxious. I'm not going to lie to you guys. Does anybody need a stroller with the motor? Probably not. I'm just going to say it. I really am. Um, looking back, I probably should have just got the pre one because it's the exact same stroller. It looks exactly the same. It just doesn't have a motor and it also doesn't weigh as much because there's no motor. I feel like if you're someone that does walk a lot on hills, maybe, I've probably used the motor part twice in my life. One time while I was actually going on a walk, and the second time is because there is an app for the stroller. This is so 2022. There's an app for the stroller that you could download, and you could put the stroller into rocking mode so that the stroller will just pace itself back and forth a little bit to rock your baby to sleep and keep them keep them calm. I used that at a restaurant when my son was like a newborn, um, and that's the only time I've ever 
turn the engine on. Other than that, the battery is not even in it because I just always forget. So definitely don't think that exact version of the stroller is a complete necessity or that it's really worth it because the stroller is very, very pricey. Um, I think you could just do with the regular premium version. Like I don't, I just was being my usual old extra self. Oh my God, was that piece of hair sticking out the whole time? Yes, it was. I was just being my regular old crazy self thinking that I wanted that version and I didn't need it but you know absolutely beautiful so just diving into the details of the stroller in comparison to the stoke one I really like the Cybex one because it folds all together there is no disassembling the stroller there is no putting one piece in then the second piece the seat collapses with the body of the stroller which is nice and it's also a like one hand closed like you use the what is this called the handle of the stroller has the button so it's super super easy however the stroller is so heavy so heavy I, you know for me i guess that goes with all full size strollers but the extra three to four pounds that the motor adds they count but a very beautiful stroller the leather details are very amazing they paid attention to like every little detail on a stroller everything just feels expensive the the glide is amazing on the stroller as well um it's a really nicely made stroller it really really is it's gorgeous i have the all black on black one it's because for me i felt like that was the most fitting for a little boy um but i definitely would have opted for the pream it's much cheaper and I wouldn't feel as bad about not using the stroller if that was the case. But if you ever like stare at the Cybex from the side profile of it, you'll be like, it looks kind of, it looks like almost ill proportional. It's just something a little weird about it, but it's a beautiful stroller. And the Cybex one is a German stroller. So clearly us Americans need to get it together. I'm saying no. But on the talk of Cybex, I also had the Cybex bassinet that matches my stroller. And looking back, it's something I would never, ever get again, ever in my life. I didn't get much use out of my bassinet. My son was born in the summer, so I was outside often. But they outgrow the bassinet portion so quickly. But this is the catcher. So with the Stoke one, you could use it from birth. Like from day one, you could use that Stoke actual stroller seat. But with the Cybex, your baby has to be basically six months or sitting up on their own to sit in that seat. You cannot put a newborn in that seat, a two-month-old, a three-month-old. Your baby has to be sitting up. So there's definitely a downside. Um, again, you have to weigh your pros and cons when it comes to this stuff. Are you just going to use the stroller by itself with the car seat for six months until your baby can sit up? Or is your baby gonna be like my baby and not stay in an infant car seat for longer than two months and now you just have a stroller you can't use, you know? But for me, for the bassinet to cost two to three hundred dollars and you me, I I probably use my bassinet like two to three times and she's big. She doesn't fold up at all to go into the car. So now you just have this huge bassinet. It almost was like a waste of money and a waste of time honestly like it was very beautiful i loved it for photos but other than that it was the most impractical thing in my life like it's definitely not something you could pack up into your car especially if you have a regular car so definitely keep that into mind if you're going to go for the side bags definitely try to keep your baby in their infant car seat until they can sit in the actual seat if you don't want the best in that because honestly you cannot fold it up and put it in your car the next thing that i had is my infant car seat and i had the kleck ling um the reason i opted for the kleck car seat was because it's the number one on the market for safety it outranks nuna and i know everyone loves their nuna but it was very it was very similar in details and specs to the nuna but it just it took the cake for safety and stuff like that. I believe Kleck is a Canadian brand. Why do I know all of these things? Because I do my due diligence and I do my research when it comes to my babies. But even though Nuna had more options and just, you know, varying features because there's so many different Nunas. There's like the Nuna Pippa RX, LX, Lite. Like, I don't know. But there's so many of them that just having something above them is safety. And it was, don't get me wrong, it was literally by like two points or something like that. I just wanted to go for the Kleck um, and that's what I opted for. I also really liked that the Kleck was all black. Like the seat was black, the seat buckle was black, every little detail was black. Like it just was this blacked out car seat. It looked so modern. It looked so chic. I went for the aesthetics. I hate to say it. I hope it don't sound crazy. But I did, you know? Like that's what happens with us modern parents. Don't let anybody make you feel bad for being that way because I think we all are. Um, beautiful car seat absolutely stunning very well made very lightweight 
it did its job like it was an infant car seat it came with like a nice infant cushion um which was really really nice that i wasn't expecting but for me personally i didn't get much use out of it because my son just did not like the infant car seat he got really hot in it he so I upgraded him to a different car seat which we're going to talk about as well but you know i feel like that's a case by case thing it's not going to be every single baby but my baby definitely just didn't want to be in that car seat but again beautiful car seat i definitely would try it again like your research about collect definitely um but for me it just didn't work out because my son would get hot like his whole back would be burning up and sweating we could be in the car for like five to ten minutes it didn't matter if the fan was on the ac anything he just was miserable so that was very unfortunate, but, but that had nothing to do with Kleck itself, so that's why I kind of still rate the car seat very, very high. Beautiful car seat, though. Absolutely stunning. Loved her. Loved, loved, loved her. But my baby didn't, so what can you do about it, you know? Third and last stroller that we're going to talk about is the Baby Zen Yo-Yo. I think it's like the Baby Zen Yo-Yo Plus or something like that. I don't know. But I also have that. I have that stroller because I, I am on the go a lot. Whether it's the airplane, in the city, yada yada yada. Sometimes I just don't want to be bothered with the full size strollers that I have. So I picked up the Baby Zen Yo-Yo from birth. Um, this was also a gift for me. And I also feel a couple ways about it too. It's a very expensive stroller. It's like five to $600. It's not cheap. Um, and don't get me wrong. I believe the Baby Zen Yo-Yo, and there was another one on the market were like the first two strollers that ever folded up that compact which is why I opted for that one but there's way more that do it now too that like just collapse into itself and they're really really small the reason I opted for the baby zen yo-yo is because one it could go into an overhead compartment on an airplane that was very very big for me when selecting that one because as someone that travels a lot and I have been someone that has checked my stroller at the gate and did not receive it back at the gate when I got off the plane. It went to baggage claim. I felt like that was a very big hassle when you have bags and like now you're trying to carry a baby. So having that experience, I really wanted something that could go onto the plane with me. Not everyone's going to have that experience though. But for me, that was a very big selling point for me. She's aesthetically pleasing. She's matte black. She has a nice taupe seat wear. You don't have to buy the taupe seat pack. There's so many other colors you could choose from. But I felt like because I had gray and black, I felt like the tan was a nice option for me. The sunshade is a nice amount of coverage. I have the matching umbrella that goes to it. I have the leg rest, the cup holder. All of those little bits and bobs that can be sold with that stroller. I own them. And I do like it. The only thing that is the downside for me about that stroller is it costs $500 and the wheels are very, very poor. And I don't think that the wheels are poor because the quality of the stroller though. I think it's poor because it's such a small, compact stroller. Like it's not a regular umbrella stroller where the wheels could be just a bit bigger. Um, it's something that literally folds up and could be worn on your shoulder and approved to go on an airline, you know? So... I, I understand why it happened, but I just wish it just had like just this much better of a drive, especially after driving the Stoke in the Cybex. You would think you're driving like the crappiest stroller ever when that's really not the case. It's just that's how it feels in comparison to those. It's like driving a Bentley and then driving like, I don't want to bash nobody's car, but it's like driving a Bentley and then driving like a little, a little 2004 Mazda or something, you know, like it just you could tell the difference. Uh, the next item we have is Enzo's current car seat, which is the Cybex Serona. I think it's like the Serona S or something, which is the 360 car seat. I get so many questions about this car seat every time I show it in my vlog. Um, I love the car seat. When I got mine, it was the only one on the market that did that, so it was like this groundbreaking, legendary item to have for your baby. Now there's multiple options that I also have linked down below. So just let's just talk about the Cybex before we dive into the other options. So the Cybex, very, very plush, very nice quality. I expect nothing less from Cybex. It also comes with like a car seat sensor and then a sensor that you could put into your car that anytime you buckle your baby in, the sensor will light up and it basically will alert you on your phone and the sensor in the car that the baby's in the car. That way, if you were to get out of the car, it will tell you to check to make sure that you have the baby because I know what you're thinking. Who the hell use the baby car it happens some people do it some people are exhausted they're rushing life just happens and tragic things have happened to babies due to that so it has that nice feature 360 loading leg is easy to install to me everyone says it's really hard to install i followed the youtube video to a t and it was easy i don't know that's just me um it is a big car seat if you don't have a big car i don't know what to tell you but it's a very big car seat and 
it's beautiful. The only thing about it is it is very hard to rotate it because the lever is underneath the seat. So you're basically like, I'm just showing you for demo purposes. Again, I'll try to like link a video down below of it. But basically you're sticking your hand under the seat and you're pressing and then you have to push all the way up until you like feel the car, the car seat latch and then turn it like it's not like a smooth easy glide but again it was the first of its kind on the market so you learning as you go stuff like that the reason i bring that up is because now there are two other options that are on the market they're new they just came out this last couple months i believe um and i want them of course i do right so one is the even flow 360 she is a far cheaper alternative than the cybex the cybex is around 500 to 600 dollars and the even flow one is around three to four i believe so she's substantially cheaper she does the job she does the same thing the reason that this whole 360 feature is so desired when it comes to parents is because it just makes it so much easier to put your child in the car and to get your child out so rather than leaning over them trying to buckle them fighting with them fussing with them you're just going to turn the seat to a zoo put them in turn the seat like very very simple so if you're wondering why people are paying a premium price for a car seat that turns, that's why. Um, but before these even came onto the market, Orbit did it. I had an Orbit with my daughter and Orbits are just heavy, they're just bulky. So that's why we're talking about Cybex being groundbreaking, okay? Um, but yeah, Evenflow does it. And then Nuna came out with one. I know everybody loves Nuna. I think Nuna is a beautiful brand. The quality is always amazing. Everything is just always so pretty. And if you go and watch the demo videos of the Nuna and the Evenflow, the way that their functionality is, is just, 10 out of 10 like the buttons are in really desirable places they're easy to rotate there is no fighting with the car seat so that's the only thing about it for me the cybex is so gorgeous it it does what i need it to do but i really just wished it was easier to turn um other than that i would have given her a 10 out of 10 i give her like a 9 out of 10 though don't get me wrong but now seeing that nuna has done what i wish the cybex did do and i know it's achievable it makes me wish I had the Nuna just because it's just that much smoother than having to stick your hand under the seat. Like because I believe the Nuna one is at the top of the car seat on the side, and I believe the Even Flow is like on the side at the bottom. So, you know, they basically took Cybex as something to learn from and they made it better. It's not a deal breaker for me, but I did just want to mention that something that is a flaw with the Cybex, there is an alternative out there to make it easier for you. Because you know, I'm your girlfriend. I'm gonna tell you if you're gonna spend six hundred dollars if you're gonna spend six hundred dollars on a car seat, let's get the one that's really the best. All right, the next thing on our list is diapers. Um for diapers, I use the coterie diapers. Are they a must have? No. But as someone that has used every single brand of diapers with my daughter, my firstborn, and I also used some with Enzo, like I used like honest diapers and stuff like that. Odory takes the cake for me. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful quality diapers. It's just everything you need them to be. I've never had any accidents with them. They hold moisture really, really well. Like I'm talking about to the point that you could let your child go to the bathroom one, two, three times even. And when you go to change your diaper, there's no moisture on the baby itself, which is a really, really nice innovation. Um, I've done Pampers, Huggies, Loves, all of that, and they all have had something wrong with them. Once I used Coterie, I couldn't go back. I just hear me talk about Coterie multiple times. Um, if you're new here, they are expensive. Are they more expensive than regular diapers? I'm not sure. I also really appreciate that they're a subscription base, so I just get them shipped right to my door like it's hassle-free. I update the sizing via text. I save the emoji in my phone. I text them, when's my next shipment? Can I change the size? They say, yeah, they do it. Boom, the order is out. It comes to my door every single month. I get a month's supply of diapers. It knows how many I need, apparently. And usually, by the time my next package comes, I'm literally just opening the last package of diapers which is so cool um really love it i'm a modern mom i like having the option to just have my diapers delivered straight to my door on a subscription with my wipes i do have a discount code for you guys i'm not sponsored by them by any way it's just a brand i really really do believe in so i have the discount code right here on screen for you and i'll just also say it. it's coterie asia insert it for like your one-time purchase it doesn't apply to auto renew test them out see how you feel about them save some money so you don't feel so guilty about buying a little bit more of a splurgy diaper and you know like let me know they're really amazing diapers though you guys know i don't recommend anything that i don't love highly recommend the next thing on the list is the hatch changing pad if i had to do it all over again 
I would not buy her. This is something I bought for myself. And she's cute. Don't get me wrong. She sat on the dresser for a while in my room just so I had somewhere like to change him when we were in here. Obviously, he was with me most of the time because I was breastfeeding and stuff. Um, and I did change the baby on there. I did like the material because it was a surface that was easy to wipe down. It wasn't like a cloth um, or like a cover or anything like that. It was like a, like a, a nice silicone type of feel. Um, but the reason this one was more expensive than your generic one was because it has a scale in it so it has this fancy little app that's on your phone like so many other things these days and basically you could weigh the baby you could put the baby before and after a feed so that it could tell you how much your baby drunk it's more so for breastfed babies because you don't know what your baby's eating um stuff like that the reason i did use it in the beginning was because when my son was born he was small, he was like six pounds, um, and I did wanna just ensure that he was gaining weight because we were going to a lot of doctor's appointments to ensure that as well. So I just also wanted to do my due diligence at home. But again, I took it with a grain of salt. Like, I never thought that it was spot on because I knew it was impossible, like technology is not that great. So yeah, once he w got the clear off from the doctor, I never turned, the <laughs> I never opened the app ever again in my life. So I definitely don't think it's worth it. Like I don't think it's necessary to spend that much money on a changing pad. Um, She's cute though. She's very, very simple, but I know Skip Pop makes a version that looks exactly the same. So if you want that type of aesthetic, definitely go for the Skip Pop one. But when it comes to the technology in it, I don't think it's worth this. The next thing is the outlet sock. I know some people are going to say they love the outlet sock for me. I didn't care for it. I used it one time and I never reached for it again. Um, it just was another hat. So it was something that I feel like heightened my anxiety over my baby, if anything. Um, you know, I'm not a first time mom, so I kind of know my way around more than a regular person, but I put him, I put it on him one time because when he was born, his breathing was so shallow and I just wanted to make sure that he was breathing, you know, like I was afraid because he was so small. Um, I put it on him and it came off. And the alarm started ringing from the outlet, right? And it, it sounded like a fire alarm. And I started freaking out in the middle of the night. It was like 4 o'clock in the morning. I finally fell asleep. And it's just because it fell off his foot. Not because it didn't sense anything. It's because it fell off his foot. So I think it's one of those things where, like, they're going somewhere with technology. But it has its kinks to be figured out. Um, but I know some people love it. Like, people that have preemies or babies with more needs. They do say it really, really helped them. But for me, it was something that made me more overly nervous than I needed to be. Um, so I never used it again after that and we're perfectly fine. Again, some people love it, some people hate it. But for me, it definitely wasn't worth the price tag. Mine was gifted to me. My cousin had a baby before me, so she handed it down to me. I have now handed it down to my friend. Um, if you get it gifted to you, I think that's amazing, but I don't think it's worth spending like the money out your pocket. I definitely also wouldn't open it if you got it gifted to you. Like, see how you feel about life when the baby's born first. Cause you might come to find you don't need it. Like, you know, like some of these things are so technology based that they're just taking away from that time of you and your baby. But whatever. The next thing is the Baby Bajorn Bouncer. 10 out of 10 for me, absolutely love it. Amazing quality, so easy to fold, it's so compact. It's literally underneath one of the beds in the house right now. I love it, it's so pretty. It's like plain, it's gray, it's the softest material ever. It looks really, really nice in photos. The only thing I have to say about this freaking Baby Bajorn Bouncer is that apparently in the United States it is regulated that the Labels, not the labels, but the um, suffocation things have to be in clear sight. Whereas in other countries, i.e. Europe and Canada and stuff, they don't need to be. So if you ever see your friend from another country and they post and you're like, their sticker is not visible, it's because the countries have different rules. I didn't know that. Why do I know that? Because I because I DM Baby Bajorn and I wanted to know why, okay? Because it was messing up my photos, okay? I know. So petty. But I was serious. Um... Absolutely beautiful though. 10 out of 10. Definitely will buy her again. Definitely will spend the money on her. It's versatile. It's very, very nice. If you don't have the money for that one, the Fisher Price ones work just as well. I also had one of those. Babies love them. Honestly, don't stress yourself out about it. But if you did want to splurge on an item that you're going to see is going to be in your focal point more often in your house, I would definitely highly suggest splurging on the Baby Bajoran Bouncer. I'm not gonna lie, that's just how I feel. Um, the next one is the snoo. Girl, I could talk about this snoo all day. 
let's just really get into the snoo. So the snoo is by Happiest Baby is by the doctor, Dr. Harvey something. I don't want to mess it up. I don't want to seem like I don't know what I'm talking about, but it's Dr. Harvey or something. Um, so the snoo is a bassinet. She costs sixteen hundred dollars. Um, and basically, the snoo soothes your baby for you. Okay, don't get scared by that if you don't know what I'm talking about. Um, basically, you lay your baby into the snoo, and white noise comes on. It does a motion, like a little swishing motion, um, and it's almost mimicking when you were walking when you were pregnant, so it's very soothing to the baby. There's levels to it, literally. So you could put it on baseline, which is the most minimal movement. Um, so it's just like a very gentle rocking. If your baby starts crying, it's going to bump it up to level one, which just speeds it up just a little bit, makes the white noise kind of just a little bit louder. Your baby keeps crying for like another minute or so, it'll bump it up to level two level three and i believe there's a level four don't quote me on that though um and again everything is just intensifying but most people get scared looking at it don't be alarmed it's literally not causing any harm to your baby it's your baby could literally sustain hearing the vacuum and stuff like that from being in utero you walking you running stuff like that like it's literally mimicking what they're used to um why i love this new not even any of the things that I just mentioned. The reason I love the snoo is because when I had my son, I was at a completely different point in my life than I was when I had my daughter. When I had my daughter, I hate to say it, I was young, I was dumb, I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> it's the truth though. Reason that the snoo doesn't compare to any other bassinet on the market for me, and a lot of moms are going to tell you this as well, is because the snoo has two, I guess you could call them hooks, that are embedded into the bassinet itself. And it comes with swaddles, and these swaddles have wings. These wings have to be inserted into the hooks itself in order for the snoo to turn on. Like it's basically like levers in there and once the once the swaddle is inserted, it's now alerting the snoo that there is a baby in there. So it's not going to operate unless we have the swaddle attached to the snoo. Um, but what that means is that because the swaddle is strapped down and you basically velcro your baby into the swaddle itself, your baby is going to stay on their back the entire time they are in this snoo. This is a very amazing, life-changing thing if you're someone that does worry about SIDS. Um, you know, for me, I had a cousin that did die from SIDS. He was a baby, and it's just something that's so out of your control. But with this snoo, you have a little bit of control. You know what I'm saying? So it's expensive. I'm not going to lie. It really, really is. But for me, that feature alone... I would buy the snoo and never turn it on. I don't care if someone sold me a snoo that the motor didn't work. If I had the capability to put my child somewhere and know that they could not turn over and possibly like in the possibility of a blanket going over their face or something like that, I'm 100% sold. It made me sleep so much better as a new mom, as a parent, just knowing that that type of stuff was not going to happen. You could put your child in any type of crib or bassinet with a regular swaddle on but you just never know you know like can honestly guys the snoo is something i definitely back 100 percent. i know a lot of people are just like it's so expensive it's just the best and that your baby grows out of it within six months i understand that but the idea that your baby cannot turn over is a game changer for parents when we are living in a day and age of babies dying from cis and cis is preventable and the snoo is something that is preventing that so you know that for me that was really it i didn't care about the the white noise, the movement, or any of that, because honestly, I didn't turn it on often. But while we're talking about bassinets, I want to bring up the four moms one because I also had that one, and the four moms one was basically, I guess you could say, a dupe of this new in regards to movement and how it offered the noise machine. Hated it. <laughs> I hope my, I hope my cousin isn't watching this because she bought me that. It was absolutely beautiful. It was trying to go in the right direction by providing what the snoo provides at a way cheaper price advantage but now you're now you're laying your baby in something that's moving and swaying and they're just not secured you know so that was kind of like defeats the purpose um it's also not as smooth as the snoo it's also like the motor is louder so yeah he also didn't like it at all like ever i thought maybe he would like it because he liked the snoo he didn't like it but yeah I wouldn't get that one ever again. And every time people ask me about it, I also tell them that it's like 
it's not worth it. So just wanted to save you the, the hassle. I know you see that one and you're just like, oh my gosh, it's so much cheaper. It's so modern. It's so cool. If you're going to get a bassinet and it's not a snow, just get a bassinet. Like just get like the, um, the one that comes to the bed and like the bar goes down. I know Skip Hop makes one now. I cannot think of the other brand, but like just don't get that for mom's one. Sorry for mom's. I love y'all. I really do, but that one ain't it. The next thing on our list, I promise y'all we're almost down. We're almost getting to the finish line here. The next thing on the list though is the Nuna Leaf Grove. So this is that really pretty swing that you guys see from Nuna that's like in the shape of a leaf. Absolutely beautiful. I don't expect anything less from Nuna. The quality is amazing. It's so plush. It's so soft. Um, it's really comfortable. Harper likes to sit in it. Enzo likes it sometimes. But, but... The only thing I have about this freaking swing swing is it doesn't have a motor. So it's like gravity based. So you're going to be kicking it the whole time in order for it to move. I don't mean kick it one time and it's going to start moving by itself for 10 minutes. No, no, that's not what happens. You have to kick it over and over and over in order for it to move. Like you're going to kick it one time. It'll probably go back once, go back twice. Boom. That's all. That's all you're getting out of it though. Um, I don't know why it doesn't have a motor. Apparently, it used to have the option to buy a motor. They just got rid of that. That's the only thing, though. She's so pretty, though. Like, she's so stinking pretty. She's height adjustable. You can lock it. The other thing is, though, she's really, really nice because your child could sit in it for years. You could take the infant insert out of it. And I believe the weight limit on it is, like, 100 pounds or something ridiculous like that. So, Harper sits in it, like I said, when she wants to relax. Love it for that. But it's like, why doesn't it have a motor? You know, in the day and age where I have apps for everything, I don't want to have to kick a swing. And my kid loves swings. But that's the only thing about that one. So I'm not going to lie to you guys. Enzo never sits in it. It sits in the corner of my living room. And she's very pretty for photos. But other than that, nobody touches her. It's very unfortunate because she was $250. And she was also a gift. I'm so sorry, Kylo. I wish, I wish it was easier to use. That whole kicking thing, it's not for me. It really, really isn't. But speaking of Nuna, I have the Nuna Air Travel Crib. Uh, another thing, never used. I feel like travel cribs, best nets, uh, play pens, they're very dependent on your lifestyle and what you need. I never used them. I had it open and I never laid him in it because I just thought it was too hard. That's just me thinking like if, if, if it was me, I wouldn't want to lay in that. But she was so pretty. Nice quality, as always, with everything Nuna. It was phenomenal quality for a playpen, though. Like, very top of the line for a playpen, okay? Um, I just didn't need one. And, you know, th again, this is very dependent on your your household. For me, there was always somebody that was willing to hold him. There was always somewhere to put him other than the playpen. So I felt like it just was taking up room in my my house. Like, it was an eyesore. So I disassembled it, and it's never been back. And I he's about to be one, so... Yeah, I never felt like I needed it or I got my use out of it. I did have it with the changing table. When it comes to the playpen, though, I would definitely just assess if you need one. Like, if you need somewhere to place your baby and, like, you're home by yourself and you need your baby to nap where you're at, okay, I can see why you get your money's worth out of that. But for me, definitely a dud. The next thing is the high chair. I have the Maxi Cozy High Chair. I believe it's from the Menla Collection, which is like their most modern collection that they came out with to date. Oh my goodness, when I first opened it, absolutely loved it. Like, she's absolutely stunning. She reclines. She's height adjustable. Goes from a regular high chair to like a high chair in an actual chair to a booster chair. She was a 6 in one Absolutely loved her. Amazing quality. Nice and plush had no complaints right i was like oh this is like the best thing ever she was also a gift um i started doing baby led weaning it gets messy when you're giving your kids strawberries spaghetti stuff like that right it gets very messy the the materials on the seat were all fabric oh yeah i, I bet you're just like oh ew so what happened was when he became older and it was him feeding himself and not me feeding him and me letting him explore textures and foods himself. He was making a mess and I was washing the covers of this seat all the time to the point that sometimes he did not have a high chair to sit in because the pieces were in the washing machine. So that was a hassle. And then I became the germaphobe that I am. And I just was like, there has to be food somewhere in this high chair that I cannot physically see that I'm not cleaning. And it just grossed me out to think about. So... That high chair has went into storage, and I am now using the famous, the 
infamous high chair, the high chair from Ikea, $24, can't complain, all plastic, wipe her down, he loves it, no complaints. All right, so moving right along, the, the next two things are basically two of the same things from two different companies. I had both of them. Why? I don't know. I had the Daka Tot and the Snuggle Me Cot. Um, didn't use neither of them. He didn't like them. He didn't. These are another things very dependent on the baby. Some baby loves the four mom swings. Some babies hate it. This is one of those things as well. The docket top, I do still have the docket top. The reason I still have the docket top is because I also have the sunshade for the docket top. So I plan on taking it to like to the beach, to the pool, stuff like that. So he has like a, somewhere that with shade to sit. Is it a necessity? No, it was also very expensive. But the docket top for me, I did like because the base of it also had its own cushion like its own mattress so you could lay it on the floor and your baby would be comfortable um it also has more room to grow in that one which was nice so i definitely think you get a little bit more bang for your buck with the dock at top but i don't think you need her i really really don't and you know people say it's more so like if you need somewhere to lay your baby like on a couch yeah i get that just put your baby on a couch it's just for me, I just never got to use it. He just didn't like it. Anytime I put him in this docket side, he woke up. Oh, the toy bar, though? Don't ever buy the toy bar. It doesn't stay on. It doesn't stay, like, standing up. The toys are just... Just don't get it. Just It's not worth the $60. I bought it just because it's just what I do. I just spend money. Um, The Snuggle Me Cot. I really like the Snuggle Me Cot. It doesn't have a base cushion like the docket tie has. But what the Snuggle Me, what the Snuggle Me Cot did was basically... When you laid your baby in it, it almost like surrounded the sides of your baby to make your baby feel like they were being held. So that one he did get some use out of when he was a baby, but definitely not a lot. Like definitely not a lot. Definitely not my money's worth. Um, and if anything, if he was in the room with me, I just laid him down like in his bed or my bed. You know, like I, he was never by himself. And they're not supposed to be by themselves in that stuff anyway. So... Definitely think my money's worth out of those, but that's okay. That's all right. But this next thing, though, oh man, ten out of ten for me. Um, it is the Hatch noise machine. I've been using this noise machine since I was pregnant because I wanted to adapt to noise machines myself before he came because I did want him to be a baby that understood that when that sound comes on, it's time to go to sleep. Okay, I did want to create that habit for him, so I started using it when I was like six to seven months pregnant. I noticed the change in my sleep. Harper loves it as well. Um, and he really does appreciate it. I really like the Hatch one because it is an app. So I just easily go into my phone. We really love the Hatch. She's not the most expensive thing, but she's like $60. And that's like the cheaper one, I believe. Uh, absolutely love her though. 10 out of 10 for me. It's a must have. I still use it to this day. So obviously, no complaints for me, right? This next thing. Oh my God, 10 out of 10. A nanny, a nanny, baby monitor. Never thought I was going to be somebody that needed a baby monitor. I was gifted this, luckily, thank the Lord, because it changed my life. It really, really did, guys. Once I started sleep training Enzo, I just was like, I need a baby monitor. Like, I really, really do. They were so kind to send me one. Something that I use every single day. So again, like all modern baby things, it also has an app. Um, I'm going to put a screen recording on the side right here. And basically what's going on on this app is that you see his crib, right? It will show you the temperature and the precipitation in the room, which is cool. It says it's live. But the reason I like the Nana itself is because there is an activity tab. So it'll say like what the night summary is. So... For last night when I'm filming this, it said Enzo was in bed for 9 hours and 17 minutes. He slept 9 hours and 4 minutes and you interacted with him twice. Which basically means that of all the, of all the time that he was in his crib, I want to like pick him up once or twice to breastfeed him, change his diaper, move him around or stuff like that. The monitor is so smart because it says, as you can see, timestamps 622, Enzo's taken out of bed. 621 Enzo woke up 441 Enzo was helped to sleep which means that I put him in when he was awake and he fell asleep on his own 437 Enzo was taken out of bed 436 Enzo woke up by the way we're going backwards 108 fell, um, Enzo fell asleep 108 Enzo was put to bed 102 Enzo was taken out of bed 101 um, he woke up stuff like that oh Love my nanny. She's expensive. I think she's worth it though. I really really do. I know some people have a heart attack about like baby cameras and Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. I, I haven't gotten to that little whole thing yet. But I love my nanny. I really, really do. I'm not sponsored by them. But nanny, if you want to sponsor me, 
holla at your girl. And I have two more things on the list. The next one is going to be silk sheets for your crib, your docket tot, your snuggle me cot, anything like that because I did have all of those. Definitely worth the money. 10 out of 10. Um, Enzo has curly hair and when he was on his snoo, I started to realize that his hair was coming out in the back. He was getting in a ball spot. I know it was normal, but I wanted to do whatever I could to decrease that happening. So I got him a silk sheet for his snoo at the time. It stopped completely right away. I then got him the sheet for his docket side because I just kept it around sometimes and I felt like that helped as well. And now that he's in his regular crib, he also sleeps on a 100% silk sheet. Not a satin, silk sheet. And we've never had any issues with his hair ever since then. So his hair started growing back literally the week that I started doing that. Um, they are expensive. They do cost like $100 per sheet. But I definitely think it's worth it if your baby has that type of hair texture where it's falling out. It doesn't happen to every baby. Harper's hair never fell out a day in her life. And Zos, he was going bald and it, was not, it wasn't cute. It wasn't. I was like, bro, <laughs> bro, you're too young to be going bald, you know? So... Definitely think it's worth it. If you're going to buy them from Amazon, just make sure that they say like 100% mulberry silk. Um, and there's also a, a brand called Silky Tots that I also have purchased, purchased before. Really, really like them as well. And the last thing on our list is the Bentley trike. Um, it's just now getting nice on the East Coast, so we haven't used it much. But... I wish it I wish it folded down. I did. I, I wish it was more compact. The Bentley one, you're just paying because it says Bentley. You are. You're paying for the stitching on the seat like it's a real Bentley and stuff like that. But she doesn't fold up. She's not compact. You cannot do you can't do anything with her but take her out your house. So that's really the only thing for me. She's cute though. She's ab she's absolutely stunning. She does impractical like the stoop but she's gorgeous right so she gets like a six six to seven out of ten for me um she's nice i wish the steering was a little bit better on it you would think for the price the steering would be magnificent but it's not but other than that i mean it's a trike right you're not going to use the trike for the rest of your life it's just to get them feeling like they're a big kid so yeah that was all of my luxury baby stuff that i had to mention i know do not add everything up please don't because don't come for me i know it it really is excessive i know that looking back i didn't know it was that bad until i did this video um but you know i'm guilty of googling what's the best on the market what's the newest on the market what's the hottest thing on the market and i do like buying stuff for the sole purpose of being able to do these videos and tell you what you're getting you know for your money so yeah babies don't need much though they really don't you know again everything is linked down below in the description box for you to shop if you want to um and i'll try to include demo videos for the items that they kind of need but yeah i hope you guys enjoy this little baby content video because i know some of us got kids okay and it's perfectly fine congratulations to you if you're pregnant and you're expecting um Listen, I'm speaking nothing but healthy pregnancies and healthy deliveries on all of you guys. So, yeah, I will see you guys in my next video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're new here, don't forget to like the video, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I will see you guys next time. Bye, guys.